I got word that someone that I knew was shot and killed. This was a few years back. And it's sad to think of such things. Dealing with one who has been killed or taken out in a deadly or ferocious way. But in having a conversation with this individual, he told me something that I think I will never pretty much forget. He said, you know, I should have been dead a long time ago. I said, what are you, what are you talking about? He said, man, all the things that I've been through in my life, the mean things I've done to other people, the things that I got away with, I'm living on borrowed time. It's just a matter of time before it all catches up with me. I'm on borrow time. And I'm thankful for that time that I have right now because I should have really been gone a long time ago. I didn't really take that too serious. But, you know, people who know that they've been living on borrow time, They act like it. They do something to try to make a lot of things happen. People like Tupac, I believe he knew. Malcolm X knew. Martin Luther King knew. The Notorious Big knew. There were certain people that's been in the world that pretty much predicted their own fate. They knew that it was coming to a halt. But not R. Kelly. He didn't live his life as if he was not on borrowed time. And it shocks me because history is the greatest teacher. He did not really see this happening to him. He figured that he could pay his way out of everything. He could have people hush their, their story, but, You know, what you do in the dark also comes out in the light. And one reason why I think that R. Kelly figured that he could get away with what he did for so long is because he was dealing with black people. You see, R. Kelly and many people who dibble and dabble in black community issues and get away with so much stuff in the community, whether it's pastors whether it's some gang members and people that don't snitch or so many different aspects that occur, he figures that I can't be touched. I can go around moving and shaking like this. There was a video that came out with me. I'm on the video. They didn't convict me. So there is no reason for me to change my behavior. I can keep living as I want to and nothing's going to happen. But this is a new day. You've seen the fall of Bill Cosby. The fall of many prominent men who have been non-black. And then R. Kelly is just the icing on the cake. But we know R. Kelly will be washed because they're going to get him on one of those counts. We, we know that he has to go to jail. O.J. Simpson had a different situation, a different charge. He had to go to jail because society was after him for something that he got convicted or not convicted of. R. Kelly is in that same thing. Society has it out for him. But do you know who is not on ball time? Those people who helped R. Kelly do what he does. See, let me talk to you about this. We'll be talking about this on the Sunday Rumble tonight. It's so easy to talk about all of the evils that R. Kelly went through and that he did with other people. And I love accountability. R. Kelly had a choice. If these things come out to be true and he's convicted of it, he had a choice. But at the same time, whoever created R. Kelly 
and put him in the situation that he was in going up also had a choice. And see, those who were complicit and compliant with the plans of R. Kelly also had a choice. But see, today, we do not talk about those people. Because, see, only R. Kelly is on trial. But not none of the people who helped him do what he was doing. We can talk about some of the young women who he supposedly slept with and uh, they were teenagers and all of this. Uh, some of those women who are under 18, I won't talk about that. I'll leave you to your own demise or, or leave you to your own questions about his dem demise on that. But women who were over the age of 18, those who have said R. Kelly did this or did that. Because not all of the people that I, from my understanding, they are victims, but they had a choice. They knew what kind of person he was. They knew the crowds that he went into. The families of women who are underage, I will talk about them. They knew the kind of man that R. Kelly, some of these women I heard offered them up in exchange for money, in exchange for fame. But see, all of them get to point the, the, the finger at R. Kelly. And none of those people are put to the task. But do you know what? It seems like you're not on borrowed time. But you are. You see, your borrowed time might not be on the court of public opinion. It might not come in the judiciary system. But see, every time you fuck up, it comes. I believe that. You might not believe it. I believe it. And society, for whatever it does, pays a tremendous cost for its lack of honesty. And see, this being one-sided and just charging R. Kelly and not charging others, it still gives people the incentive on the other side that we can continue to do what we want and cry victim. We can continue to give up our daughters all we want and cry victim at the end. Women can get away with whatever they want and say that nothing is wrong. But you can only beat that horse for so long. You can only play that fiddle for so long. And you can only drive that Ford Pinto down the block so many times until even that shuts down. You see, you, you, if you can't give justice all the way around and you just give it in one case, in one instance, you still have somebody getting away with it. But it always comes back. And the people who are most affected by it are those people overall in society. Because look at this, Bill Cosby getting hit for stuff that was what, 20, 30, 40 years ago, R. Kelly, some of these uh, things are in 1998. See, is it because that R. Kelly's victims were all black? It's taken 20 years. It's taken 25 years. It's taken 19, 18 years. See, it, 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 would this be the case if R. Kelly's victims was white? Could he even gotten away with it? Would he been able to put himself on that if he had, you know, urinated on a white, alleged white woman, white young girl? Would that be the case? See, it's it's all unraveling. That it's totally okay to do these things to black people. And this is why I don't understand about something about black women. And I, I want to point this out. Black women have supported R. Kelly for 20 years. You have bought his shows for 20 years. And because... He figured that you would do this. 
This is why he felt that he was untouchable. I really felt like R. Kelly had no respect for black women or girls. And, and and you you it's hard to respect a group that gives you money and shakes their ass to your music while you're doing sexual things to them and they know about it and still give you support. How can you respect someone like that? And see, I'm going to leave it alone here. But you cannot complain that you are a victim. You cannot complain that you have been molested by your uncle and all that stuff. And then show up at the R. Kelly concert shaking your ass all day. See, this is something that, see, you understand how it looks. And so I just want to put it out there. He's on ball time. But he's the only one that's on ball time. All of those people who help him get to where they at or where he's at or enabled him. To be where he's at. You are also. On borrowed time. And as you know. The buffoonery. Of the Negro. And R. Kelly fans. It still remains at an all time high. I'm out.